Coach Wanger, first off, uh, we're in strange times right now, sir. Very strange yeah. times here in uh, the United States of America. Not only in Ohio, but uh, America. But tell me what's going on with the Wangers. What are, what are the Wangers doing right now to get through all of uh, what's going on here at the uh, with with quarantine? You're, you guys are anything but. You're the last thing but quarantined right now, aren't you? Yeah, my wife's a, a nurse, so she's work. She's still working three days a week. She's still got to go in, um, but she's got us on lockdown here at the house. So I've been with the girls playing, running around. They're keeping me for sure busy um, during this time. It's fun, you know, but um, stinks not seeing the guys, you know, not not wrestling right now. But uh, we'll get there. You know, right now. What's the detox of your wife when she comes home? Like, is there like, hey, you got to de-louse out in the garage? And how, how do you handle that? You know what I mean? Because she probably has to like, probably has to like change at work, shower at work. They probably have to almost yeah. like have them in a something like that, right? Right. Yeah. So she, uh, I know she has to get her temperature when she goes into the building. She can't walk into the hospital with her temperature high. She's high. She's sent home. Um, and then she's a NICU nurse, so it's even locked down even more. She has to re get te- her temperature done before entering the NICU. So, I mean, it's really locked down. So, then, when, I mean, she's really good at keeping things clean and she gets the procedure. So, right when she gets home, she's right in the shower, clothes in the laundry, wipes everything down. It's just, you know, she's got it figured out. I just follow, follow the rules, I guess. Uh, you know, Mike Matten told me, he's like, wipe everything down multiple times a day. Doorknobs, surfaces. He said, wipe it all down. You guys are a whole nother level of that because your wife yeah. comes from the place where, you know, the hot spot, one of the hot spots, right? Obviously, a hospital is where a lot of sickness lives, you know? Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, again, she's really good. So, we're just, you know, washing her hands, wiping things down. You know, we're not getting around many people right now, you know, just trying to stay away and get through these hopefully just a couple more weeks so um you have two daughters but you've got like 14 yeah. sons at least right yeah right, right. How, how many guys are yeah. on the, the wadsworth team uh we have 40 this year 40 so, and you know, what do you really start with and what do you end with what do we end with uh, i think 36 30 so you only lose four guys yeah yeah they, they're a committed group really you know they've been going through our program you know we don't get a ton of new guys. We kind of keep it, you know, everyone that's went through our youth, middle school, right into high school, they kind of stay in with it and just keep going. When you look at uh, what, you know, how many qualifiers, eight or nine? We had ten. You had ten qualifiers? Yeah. Ten, Why ten did I say qualifiers. eight or nine? Did Brexville have eight or nine? Brexville had nine. So they had yeah. nine, you had ten out of the same district. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God! You had ten qualifiers. Yeah. Why did I think eight or nine? Well. That's amazing. So yeah, you guys were in a position well. to make a run. Yeah, I I, I think that they, they were believing that they you know they could. We had, we had a really good group this year. Um, just a group of kids that believed in it. You know, I I don't think our year started out the best. You know, we took some took some losses. We had guys in and out of the lineup, injuries, different things, but. This group just kept believing and kept getting better as the year went. We really, uh, you know, finished the year off great. When you've, you know, you got 10 guys, you're going to the state tournament, you've won the state tournament, you were on a team that won it. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it's been in the last 10 years, 11 years, right? Yeah. Um, when you look at that, you, you guys know you can win. You know you can beat St. Ed's. You know Illyria, Brexville, they're going to be there with, you know, you got LaSalle. You got, you know, some other teams that are nipping on your heels too. Um, yeah. when you guys know that you're in a position to win and then and it's not just you guys, everybody, right? Yes, yeah, right, right. Everybody, you're in this position to win and then it's taken away. Um, and they're still, I, I they're still got this idea we're on postponement. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that. I don't know about you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know they're trying, you know, I think Jerry Snodgrass and Tyler Brooks are doing a good job, you know, trying to, uh, you know, make this happen for the kids. You know, I know this is a really tough situation. We don't want to take it away from them, but, um, you know, it's just getting crazy now. So, um, I mean, I think those guys are trying, they're working, they're trying to work it out. Um, so it's just a tough thing. Feel bad for all these teams, all these kids, you know, that are going through this. 
you know, you say you got the daughters at home right now, but what are your guys doing right now? You really can't have any, you can like text them and call them, but like right. you, you got guys who they can't train right now. They can't drill the gutter. They can't wrestle. What do you no, guys do yeah. in this time off right now? It's tough. You know, I've never been away from the guys this long. Um, we're keeping a lot of communication. I, I send a daily workout to them. Uh, it's something they can do at home, you know, running, push-ups, whatever they, you know, something they can do easy at home without others. I'm doing that daily. I'm just keeping in contact with each guy, you know, sending them videos, different things to listen to, just keep their mind right. You know, I think that's what we got to do and, you know, try to keep ourselves in shape. And, you know, I'm trying to look at it as a positive way that we're going to come back, you know, stronger. They're going to come back excited, ready to get back on the mat and, you know, make a run next year. So trying to find the positive in it and try to get better, you know, in different ways right now. That's what we're trying to do. How many seniors out of those 10 qualifiers? Two. Dom and, Dom and Hunter Griffin. And Hunter, Hunter Griffin, Griffin was our one, 132. He's a senior. The rest, uh, the rest are back. So you got eight state qualifiers back next year. Yeah. You're going to be yeah. loaded, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So let's just, say, let's just say rabbit out of a hat. It happens this year. How prepared are kids, not just saying you guys, but how prepared can kids possibly be with a six, eight-week layoff? You know what I mean? Like, let's be realistic tough. here. It's it just with the sport of wrestling, I don't think you realistically can have that time off and keep your weight in control, not be on a wrestling mat for six weeks, and then wrestle a state tournament. I just, as much as I want to and I want it for everybody, I think it's just not realistic for the sport of wrestling, unfortunately. Uh, to have all that time off and to make these kids try to control their weight, et cetera. You know, a lot goes into wrestling. So um, it would be tough, but if it comes about, I, I think the group we have would be excited to do it. You know, they would do what they had to to try to make it happen. You know, you got, I always talked about how gritty you are whenever I interview you, man. Like, I know I, you got to have a gritty wife. I know, I know you got to have a gritty wife. She got to be <laughs> tough to be married to you, dude. But um, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of your guys' hallmark, though. You're super blue collar, um, and it's just you always put together really good teams. And like you said, you guys started out the year; it was tough. It was a tough yeah. year to start out, right? I mean, yeah. um, you lost some duels that I don't think maybe you should have lost. But man, I just it just it's a tough year. But to get ten guys to the state, yeah. what happened at your district for you guys to be able to qualify ten guys? How many did you take from your sectional? We took 12. We actually placed all 12 at the district. Our, uh, we had an alternate and then a sixth place. So qualified 10, placed 12, at one was an alternate. So um, these guys just, they're, they're just, they were just believing. I really think they believe in the process. That was kind of our thing, follow the process to be elite is what we talked to our kids about. And um, I think they did, you know, I think we were knocked down a lot, a lot of injuries, you know, different crazy things. Some of these guys, you know, out of the lineup, in the lineup, just, they kept battling through coming back. You know, like you said, we got third North kid lost some things that I don't think, you know, we should have, but they kept believing they were having fun, enjoying it. And they were excited for that district tournament. They were, they were ready to roll and they showed it. You didn't match up well with St. Edward in a in a duel, obviously, no. with the, the state semifinals. But I think as a tournament, you get bracketed away from some of those guys. How did you like your guys' bracket positions? You know, when they when the brackets come out on Sunday morning, how did you feel yeah. about that? And how, what did you feel about your guys' position there? Good. You know, I mean, obviously, there's we had some tough matchups, and like it's a state tournament, we get it. But no, I think we really. Uh, could have had a great state tournament you know and the guys were ready they were excited they were just doing what they needed to so um I think it looked good for us you know we just I tell the guys not to you know take it one match at a time win your first match you know that's kind of what we were preaching through the week as we prepared for that and then we reset refocus for the next round um but it looked good. It was going to be a, a heck of a state tournament with Elyria, Brexville, Eds, LaSalle like you said you know, all those teams are great. I look at how you guys have placed guys on the next level. You know what I mean? Like you guys, guys go to the next level and have success from Wadsworth. Um, I like your guy at Air Force who pins everybody. I like that guy. Yeah, Cody Surratt. Yeah, he ended up fifth in the in the country with Falls. Yeah. I like that Cody guy. Surratt. He pins a lot of people, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, he's doing well there. Yeah. He's doing real well, not to mention he's going to be an officer and set up for the rest of life afterwards, yeah. right? And I think that's a big part of going to either, any of the three academies is you're ready for life. You're ready to lead and be elite and help America. You know Absolutely. I mean, I mean yeah, he, he's a, he was a team captain of ours. He's an awesome kid. We got a lot of good guys out there. Noah Boffin's at Cornell. He, he qualified the NCAAs. Um, he's finishing up there. He's got a nice job lined up in New York. Uh, Jordan Ernest qualified for the NCAs for OU. Um, he's doing well there. And then we have Michael Bo- Michael North, Luke Boffman at uh, Indiana and Maryland, and they had a good redshirt year. So we got a lot of guys around, and it's always good to see them when they come back. And you know, just really good culture at Wadsworth. You know, we're proud of all our guys, and a lot of good things happen. You know, and you got like places like Ashland's not far from you guys. You know, Ashland's really yeah. good in D two. Yep. Um, you got places like that are, they're local. Uh, Wadsworth is just a, you guys are just gritty. Why are guys, why are they able to thrive on the next level? What do you guys do? Clay, what do you think you do? And I remember watching you obviously coming up through middle school, high school, youth, all of it. And then, and then in college, but what do you think you guys do? What do you think John Gramulio? What, what is Clay Wanger? What do you guys do different? And why are your guys so college ready? And, and why are you having so much success? Not only in yeah. high school, but the next level. Yeah, I think we, we hold them to a high standard in, in, in everything they do, in their academics, in their life, and in uh, our training. So, you know, they're, we're training at that elite level. You know, we're, we're expecting them to do the right things in their life and, and academics. So I think that transfers right into college, you know, what they're expected to do. At a Division One, two, three level in college, it's a, it takes a lot of work. It's hard. It's not easy, you know, so I think they're so used to it, the way we coach, the way we train, what we expect from them, the people we expect them to be. I think it transitions well into college, and I think that's why, you know, our guys are doing well. And they're going to great programs with great coaches, and, it, it you know, it's just awesome. Okay, so you're such a good guy. Like, I'd love you to coach my kids, but we're going to stay over here in Jaga County. They're going to go to Kenston. <laughs> Sorry, we're not transferring. But right. two months down the road, say this this thing passes. Hopefully, you know we can we can continue to stay isolated from people, and yeah. you know it can pass. Two months from now, what do you say to Don Laparo? There's no state tournament. What do you say to your guys? What do you say when you're at their graduation parties? What do you say when when it's all said and done? What do you say to them, Clay? You know, it, I, I can't say I've had that experience, but. You know, the, just proud of these guys, proud, proud of what their their leadership and, you know, the people they are and, you know, what they're going to do the next level. Dom's going to go play football uh, at Mount Union and uh, Hunter's going to go work for his dad's company. I mean, they're just good people. You know, I know they they miss a, a huge tournament, but they have a lot of things to be proud of. You know, I mean, I remember them wrestling in our youth program at starting in kindergarten. You know, now they're seniors. They stuck with it. Um, you know, it's going to help in life. And, and those two are great guys, great people. Um, going to miss them, but as hard as it is, there's, they have a lot to be proud of. A lot of success for those two. All right. Eight qualifiers back. You guys don't avoid yeah. a competition anywhere. Are we going to see you at Ironman? What do you guys, what do you have to do to jump into the elite level? You say you, you do elite training and you, and you hold them yeah. accountable. And, and you're doing all the elite right things. What do we got to see? To, what do we got to see? You guys at Iron Man? Is that a thing, mm-hmm. by the way? Yep. Iron We're Man? going to Iron Man. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So toughest tournament in the country. All right. Yep. How do you follow that up? Yeah. We got a lot of work to do. When we get back, you know, we just got to we got to get after it and just keep believing. I think, like I said, that's what they do. They like to work hard. They like to, you know, be on the mats. They like to compete. So. You know, we just got to just keep believing, keep doing what we do, and, um, you know, we'll make that jump. You know, I think it comes from them. They got to really believe that they can be at that level, you know, in the, in the top 10, 5, whatever at Ironman, and, and know that they can do it and they want to compete there. So we'll, we'll get after it here when we can and get back to work. All right, Fargo. Do you guys do Fargo? I know that Kalis, Kalis are Wadsworth people. They run mm-hmm. the Team Ohio and USA yeah. Ohio. Does that translate into Wadsworth doing a lot of stuff with and going to Fargo? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we definitely we hit the qualifiers. We got a 
you know, a good core group that, you know, some of our football players get to football, but mostly we got a good core group of kids that will hit the qualifiers that whatever they have left when this is all done, go to the state. And then, yeah, we send guys to Fargo. So um, especially with this group of eight, we got a lot of, a lot of guys excited to head out to Fargo. We're going to go to flow. We've done that the last couple of years. Um, we got uh, some tough middle school kids coming in. Uh, Jackson Joy, he's a state champ. Um, he's going to be up at the high school. So uh, he's, he's really in the mix of freestyle. He competes a lot nationally. So he'll want to do that. So, yeah, we got a really good core group. We got some uh, – we'll hit some tournaments here this summer when this all blows over. Fargo, Flow, like I said, and just get at it. Just compete. Just want to see these guys competing. And, you know, I think that's, you know, what gets them better in the summer. Okay, you coached Mr. Ohio in football. Yeah. What? How does Wadsworth get a guy? He was a, was he a one time state placer for you guys? He was uh he was a four time state placer. He was a four time state placer. Yeah, two time runner up, a fifth and a third. When did he take as a so he 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 wrestled his senior year? What place did he take? Third. He was third as a senior. What years was he runner up? He was fifth as a freshman, runner up. Um, sophomore year, runner-up, junior year, third at senior year. And then he, he was, was tough. And he's a big guy. Was he 182 yeah. as a senior? I think he was. No, no, he wasn't that big. He was maybe 80, 82. 82? Okay, he was yeah. 82. Okay. So he yeah. was a pretty big guy. Um, How do you get a guy like that to be a four-time state placer for you guys? I thought he was like a one, one or two-time state placer. And how yeah, do you? No, how does no. he stay? He was the quarterback. Yeah, he was the quarterback of the football team. Yeah. What, well, it, what's it like having Mr. Ohio in your wrestling program? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, you know, that's just what we preach. You know, it's good. I mean, multi-sport athletes. That's what we want in the room. You know, we don't. We want the football players. We want whoever wants to wrestle. We we tell our kids play other sports. I think. You know, Joey was a heck of an athlete. You know, being that good in wrestling and football and. Um, you know, we want those kids. Don Laparo is a great football player as well. Um, running back the last two years, um, going to Mount Union. So we, we've encouraged multi-sport athletes and, you know, we have a relationship with our football coach and, um, you know, we're getting those guys into the wrestling program and, you know, we want guys playing football and other things as well. Bobby Jones, Bobby, Bobby Jones, Jones. Played, Bobby Jones played football at Penn state, right? Yep, and then Bobby Jones played for the Giants for for in the NFL for a couple seasons. Correct. Yep, so, he actually wrestled too in, at Penn State his, his senior year. He he qualified the NCAA tournament, so he took three years off, didn't wrestle, just played football. Then he came out. He went out his fourth year at Penn State, qualified to the NCAs. So Bobby Jones qualified they, to the NCAs for Penn State. Yeah, yeah. Took three years off, wrestled his fourth year after his football ended, and qualified to the NCAs. He's a freak. He's a, yeah, freak. He is a freak. But you guys have always done really well with that. I guess the whole point is like, you know, you have uh, Joey is Mr. Ohio in football. Bobby yep. Jones ended up plays in the NFL. He played for the Giants, didn't he? Yeah, Giants. He played for the Giants. Yep. Um, but you got Ben Bazzali. Ben Bazzali was another guy. He was a state champ for you guys at heavyweight. You've always done yep. a really good job with that. Talk to me about being a multi-sport athlete and why that's so important to you guys at Wadsworth because – so many people are just like, no, I'm going to wrestle. No, I'm going to do this. No, right. we're, we're, we're in a specialization. You know that, Clay. Yeah. You know right. that. But why why aren't, why is Wadsworth, why have you had so many great guys who've been mm-hmm. big guys? And yeah. it's football. It's been other stuff too. But like you look at, wasn't Busen a really good football player too? Caleb Busen was. Nick yeah. Cardinal like was I, it's great. not just like three or four guys. It's yeah. a bunch of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that so I mean, important to you guys? And where does that come from? Yeah, I mean, that's just – I think Coach G developed that, honestly. He he used to coach football as well. He was a – you know, he was a head wrestling coach, but it was assistant on the football staff. And he just – you know, and not just talking football, but mainly that's the transition we see. We get football – a lot of football players. But it, it's just important. I mean, it's just different things. It's competing. You know, I think, like, you know, rather than just being in the weight room all winter, these football players are competing. They're wrestling. They're – learning from another coach they're hearing from different people i think you know that's kind of what we preach you know learn our football coach is great he, he's a great coach and 
we want our kids to hear from him, learn from him, develop from him, you know? So it's just important, I think, rather than just focusing on one thing, learning other things. And I think that helps us, you know, as wrestlers or football players, et cetera. So um, just a big thing we preach and we want to continue to preach. And uh, we think it's important that kids are playing more than one sport. So Joey wins Mr. Ohio and they named that in like November, I want to say. How do you even keep him engaged at that point? You know what I mean? Like, it's really hard when someone gets uh, – it's a huge honor. I mean, yeah, listen yeah. to – Charles Woodson, Woodson's been Mr. Ohio, right? I Robert know. Smith's yeah. been Mr. Ohio. You look at yeah. some of the guys who've been Mr. Ohio, it's a big deal. Normally you go yeah. and you're going to play Big Ten football. Or, you right. know, we had a guy uh, a guy in the SEC, Brewer. Brewer went to, like, South Carolina. He was a freak. So we've had all yeah. these really good guys, and a bunch of them played, have played for Ohio State. And I think Lexington had the guy last year, didn't they? He plays for Ohio yeah. State now, right? So it's right. like it's crazy to look at it. Sure. How do you keep him focused? How did you do that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, he just – I think he loves – he loved wrestling, you know, and he loved Wadsworth wrestling. Um, you know, even talking to him now, he thinks that played a big piece of why he was a good football player and just – he felt like, you know, he had to finish the job. You know, he was a great youth wrestler for us, a great middle school wrestler for us, and, and obviously a great high school wrestler. So, you know what, it really wasn't that hard. It, it was just he knew he had to finish the job. You know, he had one one more year to go, one more wrestling season to finish out. Um, he was so successful. He just he knew he had to do it, you know, and he wanted to, and um, – he wanted to give that to his teammates and, you know, so it really wasn't hard. He was focused, you know, he was a captain, a leader. So, um, it was fun. He, he, he was relaxed and he just enjoyed it and put it all out there. Why are you guys so blue collar? Why is Wadsworth wrestling so blue collar? Why is the, I don't, when I go there, it's not like this gritty steel town. It's not like going to like, you go to like Steubenville and you can tell that they've had a lot of industry there and it's coal yeah. and it's steel and, that's different, right? That's very different. Right. I go to Fremont, Ohio. It's a lot different than going to Wadsworth. Wadsworth is a nice place, right? I'm not saying nice. that those places aren't nice places, but they aren't, you're not driven by industry like those places are. No. We, we have an awesome school, awesome wrestling room. It, it's just we got a lot of hardworking kids. You know, I think they – not many of them just walk in and they're good. You know, it, it's a process, you know, in youth. And, you know, Jordan Ernest didn't start on the high school team till his junior year, ended up fourth in the state, then the next year won it. Just a hardworking group of kids and, and parents that are awesome, that buy in and that put the, their kids in the right place that they need to be. You know, going to camps, going to Fargo, they're putting the time in too. You know, they're they're just as dedicated as the kids, and I think that's important. And just our coaches. We have an awesome coaching staff and just what we just preaching and to these kids to do the right things and compete. And it, it's just, it's fun. We just got a lot of good people around the program, you know, that we're thankful for. And it, I, I just say we're just a hardworking team and, you know, we, we work for what we get, you know. All right, Clay. I'm trying to think if I got, do I have anything else for me? You got anything else for me? Anything else you can tell me? No. Were, were the Grizzlies going to make some noise at the state tournament? Like, were you going to? No, I mean, it, it, it's all going good. We, we, you know, we, we had a good season. Um, really proud of these guys, the way they finished. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens here with OHSA. But, you know, if not, we're, we'll get ready for next year. And we're excited for the group we got coming in. So, um, we'll just keep at it. Keep working. All right. Where are your daughters right now? Uh, one's napping and one's upstairs running around. Do you hear? So. Can you hear like stuff hitting the floor yeah. and all types of madness? Yeah. We've been talking. <laughs> yeah, it's hitting the floor. <laughs> it just chaos. It's, it's crazy dude, this year, right dude, now. Dude, listen, I got these two maniacs. I told you, my two-year-old Thomas. They popped in yesterday during the Burnett interview, and I was like, they almost knocked the computer that. down. I mean, it was. <laughs> I, I know, told the one dude, I was like, hey, your mom has a question for you in there. And he went in, and my wife was like, he's like, mom, what's the question you have for me? And she's like, I, I don't, dad said you had a question for me. And she's like, oh, <laughs> she got it. She picked up on it. And she was like able to corral him in there for the rest of the time. So oh, they didn't God. come back. She got it, though. She's like, oh, the, the light bulb went, oh, I, really, I don't really have a question. He just sent you in here. All right. 
<laughs> but um, when is your wife? So she's on. Is she on one of her three? What is it? Three twelves? Is it right now? Three twelves. No, she's not there today. She goes in tomorrow. So, and are they, is it three twelves in a row? No, it, it's scattered. It can be scattered around. So it, her schedule's pretty random. So she'll do. She'll go. She did Monday, I think, and Thursday, and then I think she does Saturday or something. Got like it. That. So it, it's real random, but um, you know, it's good. She she likes it. So I'll have the both both the kids tomorrow by myself. So oh, do you guys live in town or out of town? Where do you live? What do you live in Wadsworth or out outside? Yeah, right in Wadsworth. Yep, yep. I mean, our parents are around, and you know, we got a lot of support. But um, I'll have them both tomorrow. They'll they'll be they'll keep me busy for sure. Barrel of monkeys. Oh gosh, they're, they're starting to fight now, and <laughs> the little oh. one's trying to bite. Oh, <laughs> uh, listen, my. Yeah, Ferdinand, my four-year-old, clobbers the two-year-old. It's not even close. It's not fair or close. <laughs> they wrestle. I'm just glad nobody's head's been bounced off the brick hearth yet. That's We're waiting for that yeah. that one, man. Um, Well, listen, hey, stick around for a little bit. I want to talk to you a little bit afterwards. Thank you for the yeah. time. We got anything else for me? No, anything no, else? Zab, anything else? I appreciate it. Oh, hey, yeah, what does the rest of your schedule look like? I know you go to Ironman. You go to North Canton. What other t- – oh, and you have the GIT, the that GIT tournament, toughest yeah. one-day tournament in Ohio. I think we're going to yep. try and do it again next year. It's great. Yeah, I'd love to have you. For you, sure. won it, you won it with uh, Graham in the field this year and, and, and a, a resurging Graham team. Yeah. Um, they won it last year. Yep. But um, we, uh, but what's your yeah, schedule have, look we like? We go to Powerade as well. Oh, you go to Powerade? Okay. We hit the Powerade. That was our first year this year. That was We loved it. That was a great tournament. Um, you know, we always have a good duel with Brexville. Uh, we were up on their stage this year. They do a great job of hyping it up. You know, it's a lot of fun. Um, so we'll do that again. And, uh, a couple duels, GIT, like you said, our league tournament, we got a tough league, you know, with Aurora's in there and Highland and Brexville. And so, you know, we got a tough schedule, so it'll look very similar this year. I mean, next year as well. Your league is Brexville, you guys, Aurora, Aurora and Highland and Highland. It's a pretty good league. Uh, so yeah, it's a, real it's tough, a league. tough league. Is that the suburban yeah. league? Suburban League, yeah. Yeah, it, didn't you guys win it some inordinate amount of times in a row? Yeah, twenty twenty five. Did Braxville ever finally beat you? They did. They beat us two years ago. Um, Don't say it was ago. your first year, Clay. Don't say it was no, your first it, year. No, no, I we won it my first year. Then they beat us this year. So they beat you, geez, last year. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. They, his hair yeah. probably turned red. <laughs> yeah. More he, red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was wasn't yeah. happy. I, I'm but. guessing he wasn't happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing he wasn't happy. No, uh, but. Well listen, man, what are you gonna do with the girls today? Do you go outside dude, it is it is like sixty five degrees here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's nice. Yeah, we'll be out. when the one wakes up, we'll go back outside, run around a little bit, get them out, go, you know, doing something. So Okay. It'll be cool. good. Cool, man. All right, hey, yeah. stick around a little bit. I'm going to cut this live feed. I'm going to cut this Thanks, other sir. one. Thank you for the time, man. I appreciate it, Yeah, Clay. thank you. Thanks for having me.